This is Twit. This is one of many stories coming out of DEF CON Black Hat besides all the, you know, hacker summer camp. John Deere. Oh, did you see this one? That's a good one. Yep. A new jailbreak for John Deere tractors. Uh, I put up a um, Corey Doctorow uh, thread on watching it happen. Yeah, Corey was in the audience. So uh, oh, an yeah. Australian hacker named Sick Codes actually was able to break into the tractor programming interfaces on a John Deere tractor. He's actually an Australian yeah, lives in Asia. Um, he broke into their module and he convinced the module that he had he was an authorized dealer. And basically from there, he could reprogram or do whatever he wanted. So he put a special tractor. agricultural version of Doom on it. <laughs> 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 Which Corey quite enjoyed, I remember. Uh, he also learned that John Deere is using a fairly ancient version of Linux, version Linux, 8. Yeah. Linux 8. Uh, we're up That's to 15 common, now. That's Yeah. And less common, Windows CE. <laughs> oh. uh, probably not secure and almost certainly a violation of GPL. Uh, he launched the attack and two minutes later a terminal pops up. I had root access, which is rare in deer land. Mm. Farmers did not want him to show. So this is interesting. Farmers hate him yes. because they would hack it, right. and then he would basically let John Deere know not not from farmers, but he they, people he would figure it out. He would publicize it, and then John Deere would fix it. And they were like, "Please stop telling them. This is the only way we can fix our tractors when they break down because John Deere." Exactly. Forces us to go to an authorized repair person, and that can take weeks. Which is impressive. And by then our crops are dead. That the hackers have figured, the farmers figured it out before the hackers did. Farmers are like just very mechanically and whatever. They're 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 hackers. They're they're Resourceful. mechanically inclined. Resource. Thank you. That's the word. I've never met a farmer who can't figure something out. All right. Period. <laughs> Sick I, Codes, after he made his research uh, public last year at DEF CON, said the right to repair side was a little bit opposed to what I was trying to do. I heard from some farmers. One guy emailed me and said, you're effing up all our stuff. <laughs> 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 but that was last year. This year, his hack was so powerful. He said, I figured I'd put my money where my mouth is and actually prove to farmers they can root the devices. So uh, and Once they do, then... Deer can't yeah. get back into it and right. take it back, or right. So, and I'm sure Deer will try to patch these uh, vulnerabilities. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Somebody's working on that right now. Um, did have they talked about this on Floss Weekly? Um, Actually, we did, sir. Um, Mr. Jonathan Bennett, our untitled Linux show host and club twit, he's apparently um, knows sick codes quite well and. And got a lot of joy out of this. And today's guest, Dave Tat, uh, was pretty much up in arms because of the version of Linux that's being used. Oh, yeah. And, and because and they're, they're not violating the GPL. Right. They're not adhering to the license. Um, good. Try to get sick codes on the show. That would be really cool. I'm What's also I interesting in the Corey, Corey thread is that when he put it back on, it tried to send 1.5 gigabytes of data up to Deer. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of data <laughs> on those things. So Deer actually created their own custom GPS to address things like the tilt of the earth and things like that, because it needs to be so precision for seeds and that sort of for planting. So they've actually done quite a bit of, they, they've done quite a bit with sensors and with machine learning on their tractors. So it doesn't surprise me that those things are sending lots of data. I know we hate Deer, but they've, built some really cool stuff. Oh my God, yes, it's super cool. Machines. And our food supply relies on them. Ooh. Yeah. That's a, a little less cool. So Corey says, he discovered that all it took to convince the computer that he was a dealer was to create an empty text file on its hard drive whose file name was something like imdealer.txt. <laughs> says Corey, I didn't write down the exact file name, alas, but it's not yeah. far off. Wow. All right. Wow. Makes use of, a, a great deal of use of free and open source software. Mm -hmm. Gravely out John, of compliance with license terms. John Deere is probably oh. running Nopix. 
Well, Corey also figured there were a few dear people in the audience. Oh, yeah. So, uh -oh. Uh, yeah. yeah, of course. Yeah. You know, their tech people are probably at odds with their business people. And to some, like, I, I'm really torn on some of this. As, as we use sensors to highly optimize machines with software, it does become much more of an issue when that software is broken um, inadvertently or advertently, um, simply because it, it changes the way they might operate. It might create like weird dependencies. And I'm not trying to defend them for not, it's a really, I don't think Deer's behaving well, but I do understand like things with tied to like security and regular updates we have to come to some sort of middle ground on building this sort of software in tight software to machine integration and then making it possible to fix things easily and not as an and economically for regular use, I guess. Because some of the stuff, like their emissions stuff, I do think there's probably some, that's not just FUD. I don't know. That's just me. There's a way to do it right. There's a way to do it that... Well, and I think we should be exploring that. And that's also why I say with like future business models related to connected devices are going to have to rely so much on people trusting the company providing those services. And we're not there yet because everybody is like, at like this weird capitalistic, let's just gouge as much money out of people as possible. And that actually isn't sustainable. And we're going to turn our backs on some really good technology because we understand that it's going to actively be used against us. And it's a shame, but I get it. Um, yeah, read uh, uh, Corey's full uh, post on Pluralistic about this. And he makes a very strong case about yeah. uh, why what John Deere's doing is so very, very wrong and basically monopolistic, you know. It is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Corey's new book, Cho Choke Point Capitalism, How Big Tech and Big Content Captured Creative Labor Markets and How We'll Win Them Back. We're going to get crowdfunding now by you. Yeah. Isn't that great? Kickstarter. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we're going to get, uh, I'm going to try to get Corey on uh, to talk about that because you have uh, a little bit more time, I think, on the Kickstarter. Uh, and I'd love to give Yeah. They've some. already met their goals. Yeah. But. They should meet their goals and then some. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, the yeah. more people who can access this book, the better. Yeah. Choke point capitalism. 